us. So I've said we are talking about maintenance and we are on scope of maintenance. So we look, we've looked at the plant, both internal and external services, internal and external. Now, number three, machinery and equipment. Machinery and equipment. So these are, are simply machines. Machines, the machines that you will use. We looked at equipment, we have small equipment, we have large equipment, we have mechanical equipment. So this is what we call machinery and equipment. Now, under internal, we have catering, laundry, cleaning, and firefighting. So we have catering equipment, laundry equipment in the hotel, cleaning equipment, and firefighting equipment. So all these must be taken care of by the, the internal department, the internal maintenance department of the hotel. In other words, let's say for instance it is catering equipment. If an oven is not working, the first person to realize that the oven is not working is the pastry chef because that is the person who works with it on a daily basis. Again, the person who cleans that oven daily is the kitchen steward. That's why it is internal. But now suppose they've realized it is not working. So they need an external force to come and check it. But it is their primary function. It is their primary function to maintain, to make sure one, it is clean. It is not switched on when it is not working. After working, it is switched off. The oven door is not banked. That is internal responsibility. So that's why we have internal and we have external. So under external, we have transport. Transport. And firefighting access. Transport and firefighting access. Now, when we look at transport as an external point, in the scope of machinery and equipment. In transport, we say in the hotel industry, we cannot transport the hotel. We transport our raw materials and we transport our customers. So they are coming from outside. We must make sure our roads are okay. Our infrastructure is okay so that our hotel is accessible so that we are able to get customers and our suppliers are not facing challenges when they are bringing supplies or raw materials next we have number four yes number four specialized areas the other scope specialized areas what do we call specialized areas specialized areas are those areas that have been prepared specifically for a particular task that is the other scope if you are having a hotel Obviously, you have your kitchen, you have the restaurant, you have the, the guest rooms, maybe you have a swimming pool, maybe you have a spa, all those. Now, when we look at the specialized areas, specialized areas are like, under internal we have swimming pool. The internal we have swimming, swimming pool, that is a specialized area. In other words, you must have someone special who knows how, how to train people how to swim, how to clean the swimming pool, how to treat the swimming pool, such kind of things. That is internal. Under external, on specialized areas, we have gazebos. You know gazebos, those open outside areas, but they have shades. Is it gonna shade? but it's somewhere outside where people can sit and relax outside the, 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 the main building. So gazebos, barbecue areas, gazebos and barbecue areas. That is external. So as much as it is outside your hotel, outside the building, outside the kitchen, but barbecue is still taking place there. 
it is a chef who will be responsible to go and do the barbecue. Number five, building envelope. Building envelope. Building envelope. Envelope, you gonna initial building envelope. Now, when we say building envelope, now I'm taking you back to building fabrics. Like the, the parts of a building or the materials that we use to build. So when you are looking at a building and what is encompassed in there, that is what we are calling an envelope. Like a building has doors, it has windows, maybe it has decorations, like it has been painted. Those are what we are calling envelopes. It has the gutters, it has the roof. All those are what we are calling building envelopes. So when we are maintaining, there are those that we maintain from inside and those that are external or outside and they still need maintenance. So under building envelope, in internal, we write doors, Milango, windows, walls, ceiling, paint work, kama ume paint, paint work, maybe your walls are painted, you clean them according to the type of paint or you repaint, kama unataka kama your paint imetoka, that is internal, then on external we have the roof, guttering, everybody knows gutters, so that's what we are calling guttering. So guttering, fire escapes, fire escapes, like the exit routes and the fire assembly point. So fire escapes, chimneys, chimneys, especially now if we are talking about the kitchen and now smoke needs to be extracted from the kitchen so chimneys structural repairs structural if the structure needs to be repaired structural repairs etc so in other words on the building envelope we are looking at the building itself what is inside the parts of the building that are inside and the parts of the building that are also outside they both need to be maintained now the last thing on the scope of maintenance is the site and site simply means the location where you have built your premises where you have built your hotel where you have built your hotel so the site now under the site we do not have anything from internal because it is a location is just like the place where you've built the hotel so what will you look at what will you maintain because you've already maintained you've already built your premises so what you maintain from the premises is what we've called the building envelope so when we come to the scope of maintenance in the site we only look at external outside the building so under external right gardens gardens pathways pathways are corridors or the people traffic where people pass pathways fences how is your fence fences gate the gate so you also take care of the gate make sure there is security boundary walls boundary boundary walls boundary walls etc so now, when I talk about the scope of maintenance, I've said we are simply looking at what 
does maintenance entail? What is the coverage of maintenance? When I'm talking about maintaining my premises, what exactly am I maintaining? Am I only sweeping the floor? Or am I even checking the painting, like repainting the, the, the walls, checking the gutters, whether there is any dirt in there, checking whether my water system is working, whether electricity is working. So maintenance, the scope of maintenance is a combination of many activities that take place in our premises to make sure that we lengthen the life of that particular premises. Now, let's have another subtopic, importance of maintenance. Importance of maintenance. Importance ni kama benefits. So in other words, we are asking, why do we maintain our premises? Why should we sweep? Why should we mop every morning, mop the restaurant, every day clean the oven, every day mop the kitchen floor? Why don't we just let it stay the way it, it is? Number one, it reduces the risk of costly in season downtime. It reduces the risk of costly in season in season downtime. In season downtime. What am I calling downtime? When we, we, we talk about the hospitality industry, hospitality industry has got two seasons normally. Leave it alone now. We have what we call the high season and there is what we call the low season. Now, the high season is what we are calling in season. The time when the customers are too many. The customers are too many. So if we do not maintain, it means we'll have too many customers, but we cannot accommodate all of them. Why? Because some of our facilities are not working because we have not maintained them. But when we maintain them, now we've reduced that risk of not being able to accommodate people. So once we do maintenance, it is a benefit to us because we reduce that cost of having in-season downtime. Downtime is when you are not able to accommodate the customers. They are there, they have booked, but you cannot take them. Number two, reduces repair costs, reduces repair costs due to preventive maintenance, reduces repair costs due to preventive maintenance, reduces repair costs due to preventive maintenance. Now, I know I'm still going to talk about types of maintenance, but when we are looking, we are talking of preventive maintenance, that is the type of maintenance that we do to prevent something from failing, to prevent our equipment from failing. So once you do that, it means you've already taken care of any repair which could have happened in the future. So it is at, uh, an importance of maintaining you reduce the repair costs you will not have to incur costs to keep repairing your equipment because you already did preventive maintenance number three it ensures optimum performance at all times it ensures optimum performance at all times so what is optimum performance? The maximum expected performance. So when you've done maintenance, when you've done repairs, maintenance, you've made sure that if it is equipment, each equipment is working as expected. Then it means it is able to produce the best results that is, it is supposed to produce. Number four, it gives a higher resale value gives a higher resale value gives a higher resale value for well maintained equipment gives a 
it gives a higher resale value for well maintained equipment. What am I calling higher resale value? Once you've used your equipment, I'm very sure you've seen big companies like hotels or even like institutions auctioning their old equipment. Remember, companies the auction. They are not auctioning because they are closing the company, no. They are auctioning because they want to purchase new equipment. So when they are auctioning, they are like selling. So they are selling out to people. And when you've maintained your equipment well, even when you are auctioning, you are able to quote a higher price. You are able to sell at a high price than when you did not maintain because nobody wants to buy uh, an equipment which is not working properly. So when you auction and you had maintained it very well, then you will get some good money. So that is what we are calling higher resale value. Now, that is the importance of maintenance. My next subtopic is types of maintenance. Types of maintenance. Now, when I talk about types of maintenance, I know that there are many types of maintenance according to different units. You know, we have general maintenance, we have preventive maintenance, we have corrective maintenance. But now today I'm going to talk about like four, four types of maintenance that you should be knowing. And there are some of them which have some smaller subtypes within them. So you should be able now to differentiate between the, the main type and the smaller types within one type. So types of maintenance, number one. Number one, maintenance, repair, and operation. Maintenance, repair, and operation. Into brackets, M, R, O. That is the first type of maintenance. Maintenance, repair, and operation, M, R, O. We are going to define what that is. So, Ivan, this refers to all actions. This refers to all actions which have the objective. All actions which have the objective of retaining all actions which have the objective of retaining or restoring an item objective of retaining or restoring an item in or to a state in or to a state in which it can perform its required function. This refers to all actions which can, which have the objective of retaining or restoring an item in or to a state in which it can perform its required function. Now that is what we are calling maintenance, repair, and operation. Most of the time, it is usually known as the general or the routine maintenance, the general or the routine maintenance, like things that you do like on a daily basis, like sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, maybe changing the bulb, just things that you do on a daily basis to just make sure that work is moving on. That is what we are calling maintenance, repair, and operations. Another statement about it, it involves, it involves fixing, it involves fixing any sort of mechanical or electrical device. It involves fixing
any sort of mechanical or electrical device should it become out of order or broken should it become out of order or broken and i have said for example if you, you realize this bulb is not working una replace unatoa hiyo bulb unaweka ingine nyina waka na kazi inaendelea so it's, it's like you've not done anything but in real sense there is something you have done to make sure that work continues so out of order or broken also known as also known as repair so i've said involves fixing any sort of mechanical or electrical device should it become out of order or broken full stop also known as repair comma unscheduled unscheduled so you did not plan you did not plan to do something but it just happens so repair comma unscheduled or casualty maintenance or casualty maintenance like something has just happened you did not plan to do it but now you have to do it casualty maintenance another statement about mro it also includes performing routine actions it also includes performing routine actions performing routine actions which keep the device in working order it also includes performing routine actions which keep the device in working order also known as scheduled maintenance in working order also known as scheduled maintenance so i say it there are many types of maintenance according to different units whereby you can find like you have general maintenance you have routine maintenance you have scheduled maintenance as different types of maintenance i'm not saying it is wrong to have them that way it is still correct but now you have to know there is a a big bracket like a bigger type of maintenance under which those ones fall and in this case now they fall under maintenance repair operation what we are calling mro that is all about number one number two preventive maintenance preventive maintenance and just from the name when we say preventive like we are trying to prevent something from happening so in preventive maintenance it's like the maintenance that we do to prevent the machine or the equipment from having any issues to just make sure we prevent any any failure that might occur on the machine now we write this is the care and servicing by personnel this is the care and servicing by personnel for the purpose of maintaining equipment and facilities it is the care and servicing by personnel for the purpose of maintaining equipment and facilities in satisfactory operating condition in satisfactory operating condition by providing by providing for systematic inspection by providing for systematic inspection comma 
detection and correction providing for systematic inspection detection and correction of incipient failures incipient so i'm going to repeat so this is the care and servicing of by personnel the care and servicing by personnel for the purpose of maintaining equipment and facilities in satisfactory operating conditions by providing by providing for systematic inspection systematic inspection comma detection and correction inspection detection and correction of incipient failures are written incipient on the chart incipient failures either before they occur either before they occur or develop into major defects either before they occur or develop into major defects major defects so when we are talking about preventive maintenance this is the care that we give to our equipment so that they do not fail maybe we've seen that something somewhere might be wrong or something somewhere is not working as expected so we try to correct that at an early stage to prevent failure in future that is what we call preventive maintenance it includes that's another statement it includes tests so you have to do tests you test what is not working well it includes tests comma measurements measurements comma adjustments there are things that you will need to adjust so adjustments and parts replacement maybe we need to replace some parts and the parts replacement parts replacement performed specifically performed specifically to prevent faults from occurring a fault is a failure or a challenge or a problem so specifically to prevent faults from occurring so when you are carrying out preventive maintenance you need to carry out tests you will need to do some measurements you will need to do some adjustments maybe some parts will need to be removed and others replaced with others so that you make sure that no problem will arise when you will be using that particular equipment now under that preventive maintenance we have some some small subtopic under it so write this importance of preventive maintenance importance of preventive maintenance in other words what are the reasons why you should develop a preventive maintenance plan why should you always do some preventive maintenance because it is not every every company or every time when preventive maintenance is is put into consideration sometimes so long as something is working we can continue with it working however whichever way it is working but then there is some importance attached to doing preventive maintenance so a it saves money it saves money so we cannot equate 
the cost of preventive maintenance with the cost of maybe purchasing a new equipment. If you prevent, you will use less money repairing than when it is totally not working and now you have to get a new piece of equipment. So it saves money. B, it saves time. It saves time. So you will take less time to, to do some minimal repair than the time you will, you will use when the equipment has totally refused to work. It saves time. C, it improves performance. It improves performance. Improves performance. So your equipment will be able to perform well or to perform better when it has no problems than when it has some problems. Then D, it helps safeguard your data. It helps safeguard your data. What is data? Data is your information. It helps safeguard your data for instance if it is your, your computer your office computer the chef's computer which is not working well if it is repaired on time the chef will save their data if it is not repaired on time and then it just decides to die once all that data will be lost so it helps safeguard data that is all about preventive maintenance now let's go to another type of maintenance number three condition based maintenance condition based maintenance so this is our type number three our type of maintenance number three and in condition based maintenance we are looking at what is the condition of our equipment so Condition-based maintenance, we also call it CBM, we write, this is a maintenance strategy. It is a maintenance strategy that monitors, this is a maintenance strategy that monitors the actual condition of an equipment it is a strategy that monitors the actual condition of an equipment to decide what maintenance needs to be done monitors the actual condition of an equipment to decide what maintenance needs to be done. So that is what we are calling condition based. In other words, we have put in some, like we have some, what, what you can call some, some signs. Like when you see this particular sign, then we must open up this particular oven and know what is not happening. So with condition based, we have put in some conditions what is the condition which can warrant maintenance to be carried out or some repair to be carried out or for us to call an expert and come check what is not working now number four another type of maintenance predictive maintenance Predictive maintenance. That is type number four, and this is the last one. Predictive maintenance and predictive maintenance is simply something that we are predicting, like you can foresee in the future. You can say if we do not repair this particular blender right now, it is going to blow up in the near, near future. So you've already predicted, you've already seen how it is working and the, the danger which might come. 
if something is not done. Now we write this. Now predictive maintenance, we also call it PDM. Hyphen. This technique helps to determine the condition. This technique helps to determine the condition of in-service equipment. In-service, like the equipment that you are already using. It helps determine the condition of the in-service equipment in order to predict in order to predict in order to predict when maintenance should be performed to predict when maintenance should be performed full stop All right, now I'm done with the types of maintenance. On to my second last subtopic. Factors influencing. Factors influencing maintenance in catering and accommodation premises. Factors influencing maintenance factors influencing maintenance in catering and accommodation premises. Now, when we are saying factors influencing maintenance, it's like we are looking at what will we consider for us to know the type of maintenance that we should carry out. Is it MRO? Is it predictive? Is it preventive? Which one are we carrying out? So, number one, it must be cost effective it must be cost effective you can put into brackets cost so we'll consider cost and what are we looking at in cost we are saying whatever type of maintenance that we choose must be cost effective remember last time i said when i talk about cost i don't know whether it was in this class we are looking at the cost of purchasing something and also the cost of maintaining it. So, same to the method of or the type of maintenance that you are carrying out. Are you able to afford the cost implications that come with this particular type of maintenance? If you need to get a specialist, are you able to pay that particular specialist? And not only once, like the many times this person will be coming to perform the maintenance or the, the repairs. Number two, It must meet statutory and other legal requirements. It must meet statutory and other legal requirements. It must meet statutory and other legal requirements. So is it in line with the law? That is what we are trying to ask. Statutory and other legal requirements. Number three, it meets operational needs. Oma, it must meet operational needs. It must meet operational needs. When we say it must meet operational needs, we mean it our equipment must be able to go back to normal and work as expected. So it must meet operational needs.
and number four, higher percentage, higher percentage of actual work. Higher percentage of actual work for the maintenance team to undertake. Higher percentage of actual work for the maintenance team to undertake rather than purely inspection of items. Higher percentage of actual work for the maintenance team to undertake rather than purely inspection of items. Now, what does that particular point mean? It means it is a factor to consider because when you are calling someone, a specialist, someone from the maintenance department to come and check, let it to a blender, already you know it is not working. So that person should come to repair and do to inspect whether it is working or not working. So it is a factor to consider before I even call a specialist. Have I ascertained, have I made sure that this person will have work to do? So make sure it has a higher percentage of actual work to be done by the maintenance team. Lastly, number five, it should reduce the incidences. Incidences, new occurrences. It should reduce the incidences of running maintenance. Incidences of running maintenance. What is running maintenance? Running maintenance is when something keeps on stopping to work at the time when it is working. To say, for example, in blender. Every time you are blending tomatoes, blender in a stop. Now that is what we are calling running maintenance. That maintenance that you keep, you, you have to keep on doing in the process of working. I'm to say, for example, it's a... It will come in, in the kitchen. Let's see something like a whisk. Killer time you whisk, handle your whisk, uwe inatoka, unarugisha. Unendelea kuwisk, inatoka tena, unarugisha. Now that is running maintenance. So that is what I'm calling running maintenance. So it should reduce the incidences of running maintenance, which precipitates, which precipitates, which precipitates user requisition, which precipitates user. So that running maintenance is wasting time for the person who is using this particular equipment. So when you are choosing the type of maintenance, it is a factor to consider. Is it going to reduce kama ni hiyo whisky yangu imearibika? Ila time niki whisk handle inatoka. Will this person come and solve the problem? Ama atakuja, aseme ametengeneza and that next time I'm picking the whisk, the same thing happens. I have to keep on replacing back the handle of that particular whisk. So those are the factors that you should consider when you are choosing either the type of maintenance that you want or the, when you are choosing to maintain, to call a specialist to come and deal with your problematic equipment. Now, let's have uh, the last subtopic for this particular topic. Tools and materials used in maintenance. Tools and materials used in Maintenance. Tools and materials used in maintenance. So here we are trying to look at some examples. You can get a question telling you to list tools. To list tools or to identify tools that are used in 
maintenance. Now, tool number one is spanner, spanners. Spanners. Number two, electricity tester. Electricity tester. Another one is sharpening file. Sharpening file. Another equipment or material, screwdriver, screwdriver. Another one, hammer, hammer. The next one is hand pliers, hand pliers. Hand pliers. The next one is hack saw. Hack saw. The next one is wood plane. Wood plane. Wood plane. Wood plane. Miranda, I think Miranda. Wood plane. Another one is wood saw. Wood saw, just like hack saw, wood saw. Wood saw. So wood saw, hack saw, is not an instrument. Now you might wonder why we are talking about these ones and we are talking about catering. Remember when we are looking at catering and accommodation premises, we are looking at all the equipment that we can find in the hotel, not only in the restaurant and the kitchen. So even in the in the guest rooms, in the laundry rooms, any equipment that we have and we can maintain then we look at all those so now that is the end of maintenance that has brought me to the end of maintenance as a topic so do we have questions before i give out cut one i hope everybody saw their comments i hope everybody saw my comments on their work i have said if you did not discuss your work that was wrong or rather explain the question every question had explain 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 but some of you just listed so if you did not explain that was not okay you need to explain your points not only for the marks but so that you are able to know in an exam scenario you are able to explain what what that point means so you can now ask questions before i give cut one i have said i'm giving cut one which you are going to do the same way you did the cut and send to my email on monday anytime monday from morning up to midnight you can send
Any question? You can type in your questions in case you have them. As I give you cut one questions. So in cut one, let's write number one. Number one. Explain, explain the legal requirements. Explain the legal requirements on the following in a catering premise. Explain the legal requirements of the following in a catering premise. In other words, what does the law stipulate concerning the things that I'm going to tell you? So explain the legal requirements on the following in a catering premise. A, space allowance. Space allowance. A, space allowance. B, heating. Heating. C, ventilation. Excuse. Yes. Uh, B, pardon, B, please. Heating. H E A T I N G. Heating. Heating. I've said A, space allowance. B, heating. C, ventilation. Ventilation D employee facilities employee facilities then E placement of equipment E placement of equipment that was number one explain the legal requirements on the following in a catering premise a space allowance b heating c ventilation d employee facilities e placement of equipment question number two question number two explain five factors Please mark that my questions have explained. So when I say explain, I really mean explain. Do not just state. Explain five factors that influence the floor space. Explain five factors. Five factors that influence the floor space allocated for a catering premise. Explain five factors that influence the floor space allocated for a catering premise. Full stop. So those are the two questions that I need you to do. So as usual, you will do your work the way you did the other one with your name, your registration number, sent to my email on Monday. Now, there are those of you again who decided to copy from each other. Someone even sent me work which had another person's name and admission number. Now, I'm still thinking about how to handle that. So make sure you do your work and do it well. Do not rush do it not just do it for for sending to me no me i have no business with the work it is you who needs to to understand what how you are supposed to answer questions you'd rather get it wrong and get the answer from me or from the book and be able to understand whatever answer that you are supposed to provide other than getting it right when you do not really know what you wrote then you, you get the same answer question in exam room and you are not able to handle. 
So that is it from me for today. Any question? So next week I'm talking about tenancy. Tenancy is the last topic when you look at the course outline. So I'll talk about tenancy before I go back to water systems because there is a very important part there which I realized that. I gave you as, a, as an assignment. I don't know whether you did it because it's not an assignment that I wanted to check, but I have to go back there and handle something very critical. Kuna maswali, ama tumalize class. Nasujui kwa nini ya mpendi kuwangea? Questions? Rosalind, Swali. Rosalind na Joan, nita wachapa ngoto. Si Joan njiru. The other ka Joan. Joan. The small Joan. You are Joan who? Again ni Joan. Any question? Did everybody send their, their assignment one? I'm hoping everybody did and they sent it to me. See, Kilam Tuma, because me and Ilian roll like Jana. So I can I, still send. Yes, you can still send. Okay, thank you. Okay, then let me end the class. See you next week, same time.